So as I mentioned, this video will be recorded. All of my lectures will be recorded in case you need to go back and watch the content of each lecture. So right now I'm going to go ahead and start on question number 16. What we did on Monday was we talked about linear equations, how to solve linear equations and rational equations. So today we're going to continue to solve equations and then we're going to move to inequalities. Your assignments for this week is to complete your My Math Lab homework. If you don't know what that is, please come to my office hours today from two to three, okay? And that's a different link that you can find on my Canvas. Um, as well as um, please make sure that you complete your homework and your quiz this Sunday. So you have those assignments to complete by this week. Okay, and that information can be found on modules for week one. All right, any questions before I get started on today's content? No questions? Okay, so as of now, I want you guys to put your name and your last name on the chat. I'll do, all of it is due by Sunday, the homework and quizzes. Yes, Viviana, both of them are due on Sunday. You could do them earlier, okay? So again, please use your, your name and your last name on the chat. That's how I'm going to be taking attendance only once. If you already did it, great. All right, with that said, I'm going to start the lecture. So let's look at question 16. Let us solve for B, the little b. There's two different ones and they're saying we want to solve for little b, so for this b. And you might say, well, we want to distribute. And I'm going to say, well, you want to wait before you distribute because it's going to complicate your, your answer and your problem. So instead, I have a equals 1 half h parentheses b plus little b. What I'm going to do is what I did on question 15. I'm actually going to get rid of this first. How do I get rid of a fraction? I have to multiply by what? It's up here. Multiply by the reciprocal, right? What is the reciprocal of one half? What is, if you flip one half, what should you get? Look over here. Very same, I just changed the numbers. It should just be two over one, right? So here I'm gonna have two over H because I'm trying to get rid of one half H. So how do I get rid of one half H? You multiply by the reciprocal, okay? So when you do, when you multiply one side, you have to do it to the other. So right here, I also have to do two over H, okay? When this occurs, these become one, they cancel. But what about the other side of the coin? On this side, you multiply, remember, when you have a numerator, it only goes to the top part. So then on that left side, you have 2a over h is equal to big B plus little b. And you should see it very soon. I, it probably takes a second to mirror the image. Okay. So then this is what you have on red. What's the next step if we're trying to solve for little b? What do we have to do? We need to bring this big B to the other side by subtracting both sides by big B. So we have 2a over h minus big B equals little b. And that is how we finish off this problem. Any questions regarding 16, problem 16? Questions or no, you guys are good? Hey, if you have any questions, please go ahead and um, ask them on the chat or unmute yourself as you wish. So I want you guys to try. Yes, who's this? Sorry, Viviana. Okay, go ahead, Viviana. 
So the variable, is that what you call it? The A, the big A, it'll always go into the fraction when you put it on both sides. It will always go to the top. Um, what do you mean it would all, yes, when you're mold. So when you do, like if you have one half times whatever number, uh, let's mm -hmm. say A, B, four, whatever, it has to be a four, four, two. It multiplies to the top we talked about that yesterday. Okay. So you, you'll probably for a second. Um, that number, it could be a very, would all apply to the top. Okay, thank you. Um, somebody else, Wendy, where, where, what is your question? Yes, no problem. Wendy? I noticed that you had okay. also a question. Yeah, no, yeah. It's uh, it's over here when you say the reciprocal that you have to multiply when one it's a letter. I don't get it. It's kind of confusing. Do we have to, um, like um, the other person who asked, always okay. the A, which is the variable, has to go into the 2H, right? So it has to be 2A over H. And is this a right. this process has eliminated the variable, right? To be the B. Yes. Yeah, so you want to um, leave the variable alone. So they're saying you need to solve for B. I know you see a tons of letters. You say, <laughs> you see A, you see B, you see little big B and then H, you see so many, <clears throat> right? But you need to focus on one single one. Which one do you have to focus on? Sorry about that. <clears throat> Give me one second. Let me go back here. Kimberly, you have to focus your eyeballs. In. It's the same thing as if you had numbers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's so if you sense. have a question on this. No, no, that's fine. I mean, I, I understand. But what I would recommend you to do as well is to write notes on the questions that you might have trouble with. And then we can discuss them today in my office hours. So then I can go more in detail with you. Is that clear? Yes, thank you. Okay, so let's try question 17. You want to solve for what? The variable y. You care to have y equals whatever. This is your goal. You want to isolate, meaning you want to leave it by itself. You want to have y equals a value or a number or what a variable. So in this case, there's a lot of things going around with that y. The first thing you need to get rid of is that 6x or that 7y. It doesn't really matter where you move it. This is important. It does not matter where, does, where do you want to move it. I personally like my variable to be positive. That means I'm going to, if you have 6x minus 7y equal 4, I'm going to add both sides by 7y first because I want to make sure that my variable is positive. So I have 6x equals 4 plus 7y. Now I need to get rid of the 4, right, by subtracting both sides by 4. So then I have 6x minus 4 equals 7y. And I'm almost done because I'm trying to leave y by itself. But there's a number that is messing around with my variable. What number do I have to divide everything by? Write it on the chat. So if I want to isolate my variable, I need to get what? The least common denominator? Well, right here, we don't have a fraction. So we don't need a least common mm. denominator, right? What's mm -hmm. next to the Y? The, the seven. seven. So that, right. So that tells me, Viviana, I that's the number that I have to divide it by, okay? So you divide everything by seven, every single piece. So you can either write it this way or this way. It's the same thing. Either of the 
answers are correct. You can each put seven or divide everything by seven. They mean the same thing. Okay. Any questions on 17? Hi, right, questions. Write your questions down on the chat if you have them. If not, we will continue to question 18. All right, so let's look at question 18. 18, we have this question. It says, use the formula F equals, they're already giving us the formula of um, <clears throat> an equation. 9 fifths C plus 32 to write negative 50 <clears throat> Celsius as degree Fahrenheit. So what are we doing? We're converting. They're giving us a function for Fahrenheit and we have Celsius. We know what C is. Big C is equal to negative 50. That's what we know. So this means all we're doing is substitution. So wherever we see a C, we're going to put negative 50. So we'll have, so you'll just do here, write it down. We're only going to do a substitution. So we'll just substitute. Therefore, we'll have F to be equal to nine over five. I'm just copying the formula, but instead of writing C, I know what C is. It's negative 50 plus 32. And I need to solve for F, right? They're all just number crunching. All right, so um, somebody asked about this earlier. There is a fraction and there is a whole number. Who do I multiply the whole number by, the top or the bottom? Write it on the chat. This negative 50 will only multiply to who? Be careful, um, Michael, not to the bottom, to the top, only to the top. So this negative 50 will only multiply to that top number. So we'll have F to be equal to negative 450. How did I get 450? Nine times a negative 50, it's a 450 divided by five plus 32. It only goes to the top. Right, Viviana, because there's always a one, a whole number, it's always on the bottom when you're when you have a whole number. So that's why you only multiply it to the top. So then we need to simplify, we need to reduce. Any questions? So after this, we need to reduce. What does that mean, reduce? Well, you need to simplify negative how many times? Negative 450 goes into five. So F is equal to negative 90 plus 32. When you divide, so if you do, okay, how many times five goes in 450? The negative just comes along. Okay, that's what I'm doing. So five goes into 45 nine times. You should all know how to divide in this class. Bring down the zero, five doesn't go into zero. So you get 90. And that negative comes from that negative 450. Then all you do is combine. What is F? When, what happens when you combine negative 90 and a positive 32? Write it on the chat. Yep, negative, thank you, Angela, negative 58 degrees. So let's not forget that degrees, okay? Because we're talking about conversion. We're converting celsius to friend height using this formula so if they ever give you like you can even do this in real real world if they ask you uh well i'm in i don't know russia and i'm negative five degrees and you want to exchange us to friend height you could use this formula and you can say oh well apparently we are at 32 degrees in or friend height 
Do you see what I'm saying? So you can use this in a real life scenario. Any questions on this problem? I'm looking at the chat. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and, um, and ask them right now or unmute yourself. How are you doing? We're doing good. Thumbs up. Okay. So then we can continue and we can go to question 19. And you should have these notes already because I posted these on Canvas. So if you don't have a printer at home, you can download them on your computer and then you can just start writing the answers and just say one, answer this and my work because you are going to be able to use these notes for your quizzes and for your exam. And so that's why I highly recommend you to use your own notes and these notes that I have for you. Okay, all right, let's talk about perimeters. How many of you know how to find a perimeter of a rectangle? What does a perimeter even mean? What is the definition of a perimeter? Does somebody have an idea? Who remembers? You can unmute yourself. Okay, perfect, Serena. Um, surface area is something different, Michael, but yes, is the outside distance, the addition of all sides. I like that, Serena. Yeah, it's actually the addition of all the sides. So the perimeter is the sum of all sides. So if we have a rectangle, what do we know about a rectangle? It has two these are the same, right? The two sides are the same and then these two are the same. So the perimeter of a rectangle, let's write this down, is P equals 2W plus 2L, where W is the width, and L is the length, okay? So in this case, what do we know about this side? What is this side equal to? What should this side be? Write it on the chat. If they're the same on the width, what variable should it be? What value? Lauren, thank you. It should be an X because these two lengths are the same. So this, these are equivalent. That has an X. Um, I see a question. Um, Devin, is that how you say your name? Do you have a question? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, no. Oh, because you have like a little hand thing. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. So then what about this missing one, this blue, what I'm gonna do in blue, what should this length be? What should this correspond to? What that? What is that value, write it on the chat. Yeah, uh, Angela, X plus 52. So now that we have all the sides, we can add them, right? The perimeter. The perimeter will be what? The P will be X plus X plus X plus 52 plus X plus 52 is the sum of all sides. So we have two of the X's and then X plus 52 and X plus 52. And we all know how to combine like terms. Go ahead and find what P is. P is equal to what? Write your answer privately on the chat. So try this on your own, combine like terms. We talked about like terms already. Wendy, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, if anyway, yeah. can, can we, I see that you put X plus X plus X plus X plus 52, but could we do two X and then do two parentheses X plus 52? Yes, like this. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, that we the can. Same? Yeah. It's the same. Okay. But since I said the sum of all sides, we could also do it that way. You're gonna get the same answer. Thank you for okay, asking thank you. one. 
So go ahead and write your answers privately on the chat for me with your answer. When you're done. All right, so I have a few answers. So let's look at this question. How many X's do we see? Remember, they're brothers and sisters. We can combine them. So then what is an a one apple, two apples, three apples, four apples? How many X's in total do we have? Four. So P or perimeter will be 4X plus the numbers. Who are the pure, pure numbers? The pure, pure numbers are 52 plus 52. What's that? 104. So the answer is P equals 4X plus 104. You cannot combine 4X and 104. One has an X, the one, the other one doesn't. Those are not brothers and sisters. So you cannot combine them. That's why I like to use color because you have the yellows you can combine because they're X's. X plus X plus X plus X, four X's plus 104. Any questions? I only saw one to potentially one correct answer. So please make sure that you are looking over my notes. Any questions for this for the person that got that got it wrong? Do you see your mistake? So please make sure that you're also revising where you, your mistakes and whatnot. Okay, let's continue. Let's scroll down. This one is a little bit more tricky, if you say so. Because here you're trying to find the missing links. Okay. It's this is still, we're trying to find a perimeter. That means all of the sides. So you will not have the same type of formula that you had for the rectangle, but you still have to sum all the sides. So how would we find? this side, what would this side be? This side is not 14. Why not? Because this big piece is 14, but we have to subtract something. We have to subtract a piece. Thank you, Angela. You have to subtract this piece. So this side is 14 minus four because you don't have that long length, you have to subtract it. And this sign gives you 10, okay? Now, what about, what is, let me use a different color. What would this pink side be? Well, we know that that big one is X minus five. So from X minus five, we need to subtract what piece? This piece, X minus nine. That gives us, let me change the color, this black side. This black side is the subtraction of X minus five and X minus nine. Is that clear? because you have this big piece minus this little piece. That's this one, okay? So let's go ahead and find that piece. Let's go ahead and distribute this negative and you get X minus five minus X plus nine. When you multiply a negative to a negative gives you a positive. And some of you are giving me answers already, which is great, but let's be careful. What happens with the X's? X minus X is what? What happens to them? They cancel. 
right? An apple and then you take it away, it's gone. And you combine negative five and a positive nine, negative five and a positive nine gives you a positive four. So this side right here is four. That side is four. That's what we figured out. So when we're looking for the perimeter, the perimeter will be the sum of all sides. Remember, that's definition of a perimeter. We have to add all of them. Serena, did you see your mistake on the X right there? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so it's important you be careful with that minus. Okay, so then well, how many sides do we have? We have 14, I'm just gonna write them down. 14 plus X minus nine plus four plus four because of this little four and the four that we figured out plus 10 plus X minus five. That is all of the sides we have to consider. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes to write this down and to digest everything. I know it's, it's a lot of content. So try to combine like terms. Go ahead and find P. P is equal to what? Remember, what can we combine? The X's. I have positive X here and a positive X there. X plus X is 2X, right? Look at the color. Look at the highlighted area. And then, um, Michael, that is correct. Thank you for writing your solution privately on the chat. Now we need to combine the numbers. The numbers are what? 14 plus four plus four plus 10. Does that give us 18? I think that's a little bit more. Or, and then minus five, I didn't count, I didn't count that one, right? So let's look, we have 14 Oh, and then I didn't count another one. Which one didn't I count? I'm missing something. I forgot this minus nine. So all the greens I have to combine, right? 14 minus nine, that's five plus eight, 17. And then you have 27, 27 minus five, right? So let's see what we got. And I believe you get a positive 18. So that is correct. So Raina, please make sure that you are counting all of them. So 14 minus nine, you go ahead and count this and you get indeed 18. Any questions on this question, on this problem? Okay, I'll give you time to write it down. All right, let's go ahead and move on to done after that. We can't combine like terms, right? So let's scroll down. One second here and scroll down. All right, so for the next question, question 21, let me go ahead and stop the share because I'll share, I share my screen again. Give me one second. Okay. This should connect very soon. I'm having trouble with the connection here for some reason. 
All right, let's try. Let's try that again. Why not? All right, let's see here. I don't know why it doesn't want to connect. Can you guys hear me well, by the way? Shouldn't be a problem. Okay, thank you. Well, this is annoying. If you have any questions, go ahead and write them on the chat and I'll address them to you very soon. Let me try it this way. Alrighty. Okay. So I hope that works. I had a question. It's Viviana. Again. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, oh, go ahead, Viviana. So when it's um for 20, before getting the answer, you know how you combined the the like terms 14 plus four plus four plus 10 and then you miss nine, yes. nine and five so i was a little bit confused with that you still you add them with the other ones even if it, they're inside of the parentheses yeah because they're pure numbers whatever you can't combine is the 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 ones that are not like terms like x's you can't combine them with the x's but you can't okay. if they're just pure and pure number you can combine them yeah okay thank you all right yeah, no problem. So let me try that one more time, but using this manner. I hope it works now. Unable to connect to Apple TV. Why does it say Apple TV? All right. Oh, thank God. Now it should work. So you guys are looking at my iPad now, right? It should be. Okay, thank God. Okay, so uh, question 21, this is a word problem. That's why it's nice to um, have the notes like in front of you. So then you don't have to write all this down. What we want to do for this particular question it says a diamond ring sold for, they're already telling you the amount. This is the amount. 2,570.40 with 40 cents including the tax, okay? If the tax rate where the diamond was purchased is, they're already also telling us the amount of tax it was purchased. It's 7.1%. Find the price of the ring before the tax was added. So the way that we have to do that is by creating an equation. What is what we know? So we know this is nice to do first. What do we know? We know the final price. The price is $2,570 with 40 cents. That is what we know, the price. P means price, the total price. That's how much you purchased it for. What else do we know? We know the tax. The tax, it was... 7.1%, that's what we know. So in order for us to create an equation, we have to do what? We have to convert. So first, step one, convert, meaning you have to change it. Convert 7.1% to decimal. Who knows how to do that? It's pretty simple. How do we convert? 7.1% to decimal, write it on the chat. How do we convert this to a decimal? If you know how to convert it, write it as in the chat, please. Divide the top and the bottom, move it right. Um, yes, Ruth, you need to you can also divide the, that value by 100. They, that means the same thing, um, Angela. I'm not sure if that's what you meant about divide the top and the bottom. But you, you, you could divide by 100 or you move the decimal. So if you have 7.1, you move the decimal two times. 
So it should be 0 0.071. That's how you change percent to decimal. It should be a review. So now that we have 7.1 as a decimal, we're ready to create an equation. So let's write the equation. The original price plus original times the tax is equal to the total price. Okay. That is the equation that will lead us to the answer. Okay. So what is the original price? Do we know what it is? No, that's what we're looking for. We're finding the original price before it was taxed. So I'm going to keep this as an X. I don't know what it is. X is going to be the unknown. That's what we don't know, right? It should appear very soon on your screen. I don't know, it has like a late. So X plus 0.071 X is equal to 2,570.40. That is the equation. We know the tax, the tax is 0 0.071. So that's what we have. So what do we have now? Any questions before I continue? I hope that you're writing this down. I hope I haven't lost anyone. So what can we combine? We can combine these two. Look, this has an X. And so does this one. So we usually have a number in front of here. What number? What's the number that's always in front of my X or any variable? It should be one. Thank you, Viviana. I see it with your hand. Thank you, Richie. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, so you actually have a one in the front. So then we can combine my like terms. 1.071 X is equal to 2,570.4. Um, I don't have room, so I don't have to erase something. I just erase it because I don't have room. So it's 1.071 is equal to 2,570.40. This should be 0.40. So the last step is to divide both sides by 1.071. We're trying to isolate my variable. You're going to use your calculator now. You should, this, this course requires a calculator. It could be a scientific, it could be. So I have, this is an example of a scientific calculator. I don't know if you guys could see it. It's probably. So when you go ahead and divide it by, you have, let's click on, if we punch that in our calculator, I have 2,570.40 divided by, I'm using a calculator. Rough 400, that's the amount that I get. All right, so somebody asked, Wendy, you I got the one point.
The connection is not helping me here. You guys all hear me now? Is that better? Okay, great. Finally. Okay. So, oh, for some reason, I'm not sure why it's going, what's going on with my uh, Wi-Fi, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to connect my phone directly so I don't have any issues, I hope. So let me screen. Let me share my screen again. Sorry about that. Let me share this screen again. All right. So this is hating me right now. All right, let's try this. All right. Uh, questions? Okay. Alrighty. So I don't know what's up with this. Technical difficulties here. All right, let me take um, a five minute break and then we'll come, well, it's 10 minute break because it's 11. Let's take a break for 10 minutes and then I'll get this running. So see you all in 10 minutes. So at 11.10, make sure you're back, okay? All right, I don't know what the heck. Is my Bluetooth off? I don't know. All right, so we left off on question 22. I apologize for the inconvenience of my device on my end. Um, however, people are coming back. So let's continue on question 22. So we have the population of a town increased so this increase, let's start highlighting important information, increase in 80% in five years. If the population is currently, so as of now, this is a different piece. Currently it's 40,000, find the population of this town five years ago. So the way that we set up this problem, um, I'm going to, what we know again, what do we know? So we know the current population is 40,000 people. What else do we know? It increased, increased, that's going to be a plus 
80%. So an increase in 80%. That's what we know. And our unknown is the current or the populations five years ago. So P stands for population. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So we need to create again an equation that states the population five years ago. So the way that we're going to do that is first, we need to change again, we need to convert 80% to decimal. How do we do that? We already learned how to do that. We need to move twice. So we have 80, we need to take the decimal, bring it to the left twice. One, two. This is 0.8 or 0.80. It's the same thing, actually. Okay. It is always twice, Lauren, because you're dividing by 100. How many zeros does 100 have? Two. So that's why you move it twice. Mm -hmm. All righty. So then what happens? You create an equation P plus 0.8. 80p equals your current. So it's very similar as the one that we did previously, but instead of being x, it's p. And the plus comes from the increase. Is that clear? Any questions on this one, on how I set up the equation? This is the time to ask questions if you have them. Otherwise, I will continue, okay? So now we need to combine like terms. We have a one P, remember a number that's in front of that variable is a one. One plus 0.80 P is 1.80 P is equal to 40,000. I'm solving for P, so I need to do what? I need to divide both sides by 180. Punch that in your calculator. What do you get? P is equal to how much? Write it on the chat, please. What happens when we divide? Let's punch that in our calculator. So again, using your calculator, you'll put 40,000 divided by point or 1.80. That should be 2,200 and And then there's some decimals. But we are not going to put in the decimals because there's no such person that represents a decimal. Is that clear? So your answer should be 22,222. That was a population five years ago. Okay. Any questions on this problem? Question 22. Questions? No questions at all? You guys are doing fine? Okay. All right, let's look at question 23. Find the measure of angles of a triangle if measures, okay, this is important. Find the measures of the angles of a triangle, that's important. What is the total of the angles? We should know what that is when dealing with triangles, the sum should be what? So this, all, any triangle, so if you, let's say we have this triangle, this is one angle, this is another angle, and this is another angle. What is the total of all of the angles using a triangle? Does somebody know it's a particular value? If you know it, write it on the chat. If you don't, I'll tell you what it is. It's 180. So angle one plus angle two plus angle three should all be 180. This is angle one. So angle one, angle two, or whichever, wh however you wanna name it. So not, not 90, 90 would be a right angle. So the angle of all of them should be 180. Is that clear? 
So let's start reading the important information. If the measure of the first angle, so the first angle is four times the measure of the second angle, okay? And the third angle, so this one, the third angle is 30 more than the second angle. Notice that angle one and angle three, they both refer to angle two, okay? So angle two is going to be my variable because they all refer to angle two. What do we know about angle one? Angle one is four times the second angle. It's 4x. Remember, my angle two is my variable. We don't know what it is. They all come back to that one. Angle three, what do we know about angle three? Is 30 more than the second. So it's going to be x plus 30. So then we create an equation that is 4x plus x plus x plus 30. This is angle one. This is angle two. And this is angle three. Okay. Have I lost someone? Please let me know if I've lost someone. This is important. You should, you should know how to do these things. So I'm trying to explain if everybody is doing good. How is everyone doing? Are you guys understanding it so far? Do you know how I got angle one, angle two, angle three? You guys are following, I hope so. Everything goes back to angle two, right? Do you see that? On the, it says the first angle is four times the measure of the second, okay? The third angle is 30 more than the second. Notice that the second one repeats, like you hear the second angle. That means that's the unknown, that's the variable. So they all come back and refer to that same angle. That's how you know what would be your variable. Uh -huh. Next. Yes, who's this, Wendy? Yes, I have a question. Um, Go ahead. Whenever you, whenever you read um, a, more, it's always a plus. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. More, um, addition, increase. These are vocabulary words that means addition. Times means multiplication or less, that means subtraction. So these are just vocabulary that you'll learn with time. Alrighty, so then you are combining like terms again. You have 4x plus x plus x. How many x is total? Write it on the chat. How many x's do we have? 4x, thank you, Joanne. 4x plus x plus x, that's a total of 6x plus, we just bring down the 30 because we cannot combine the 30, is equal to 180. How do we solve this equation? Go ahead and finish off the problem. Tell me what x is. Write it privately on the chat. You need to solve. You need to subtract both sides by 30 and divide by 6. You're solving an equation. You should all know how to solve now. When you're done, when finding X, tell me what you get privately on the chat. All right, so I have a few answers on the chat. Let me explain what's going on. So 
what's the first thing you have to do? You have to isolate X. So we need to subtract both sides by 30. So we're going to get 6X is equal to 150, okay? Then you divide both sides by six and what value do you get? I claim you get 25. How many of you got 25 as a result? Okay, so most of you got 25, good. So what is 25? 20 what, 25 what? This is means that the second angle or angle two is 25 degrees, right? What is the first angle? What do we know about the first angle? The first angle is four times X. So the first angle is four times 25. That's 100. So we need to find all the angles. Okay, the third angle is what? It should be 25 plus 30, right? From this equation. So this is 55 degrees. So this is my third, my second, oh, sorry, my first and my second angle. So when you add them, you have to get 180 and I claim you do, okay? So, any questions on problem number 23? This is the time to ask questions if you have them. Any questions on problem 23? I do, I do have a question, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, who's it? Wendy. Oh, go um, ahead, Wendy, no problem. Um, on the equation, you put 4x plus x. It doesn't matter if you put the x before the 4x, Oh, it matters. No, because you could do, so it, one it plus three is that the same as three plus one. So it doesn't matter. It's just because you're following what the instructions, right? To write the equation. Okay. Right. Perfect. It does not matter the order of addition. So one plus three is the same as three plus one. It doesn't have, it does not matter if you have a flip flop. But as long as you know who is the unknown variable, that's what matters. Okay, so there is a person, I'm not sure, can you, do you have your, can you turn on your camera, Enrique? Hi, Ms. Perez, yeah, that's what I'm trying, but it's not letting me, give me like okay. a word from uh... Okay, let me, just send me a chat privately when you're ready. Okay. Okay, so quick introduction, we're, uh, I'm gonna just briefly mention him and then we will, um, he will turn on his camera, but Enrique, he is my PSP tutor. He is, um, he will be working with you side by side and helping you succeed in this course. Um, Joanne, you, Joanne, you have a question? Yes, I do have a question. I came up with the same answer, 25 degrees, but what I did, it, does it have to be this format? Because what I did was, I move the 30 to the other side, so it became negative. And then, so 180, um, negative 30 plus 180 is supposed to be like um, 150. And then I, I divide it to six because I have to cancel six X, right? I came up with the same answer. It's just, I, I didn't do what you did. That's fine. As long as you, as you know how to do a setup, if you get the same answer, that's fine. You don't okay. have to do it exactly the way that I do it. I just, I think for me, this is the easiest way and it's more like self-explanatory because I want to work step-by-step -step with you. But if okay. you have a different way, that's all, that's fine. Yeah, I'm just getting... confused because, you know, um, like right now me and my son uh, have the same class, Math 60. And so <laughs> last night we were arguing because he has the, he has different pattern, like what his professor is teaching them, and I have my own. So it makes me confused. But we both um, arrive at the same answer, though. And that's what matters the most. And remember, each instructor and each person teaches differently. So I might teach one way, and I might want 
to deliver this content of one particular way, but then another instructor could teach it a whole different way. Okay, so again, thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. But that doesn't mean neither of them are, are correct or uh, they're all, there might both be correct, okay? All right, so this is section 2.1 and 2.3. Let's move on to section 2.4. So let's go back to this section, section 2.4 notes. Make sure you have them in front of you. And then we will be ready to start a new content. This is called interval notation and solving inequalities. And we are actually, let me see my, my notes here. We're actually ahead of schedule. So it's nice to have these printed. So by today, you can easily be able to finish your, your homework after today's lesson. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to finish the whole section, probably not. But if we do finish early, that's nice because we can move on to a different section and, and then we can go back. And if we have time on Friday, we can do a practice quiz together. And then after class on Friday, you guys can get your quizzes done. So it's not, I'd like to go in a pace where we're all comfortable in and we're getting work done. Does that, does that sound like a plan? Does that seem helpful? Awesome, thank you. Alrighty, so let's look at section 2.4, interval notation and solving inequalities. Well, what is interval notation? Well, basically um, interval notation, it really consists in a number line sometimes, or it might be based on a graph or a function. There's a lot of definitions of an interval notation. But for this piece, I want to look at example number one. What does this mean? This is a statement. This is called the statement, an inequality statement. It says X is less than negative four. And this inequality is called a strictly inequality, okay? It does not have an equal to. So this is a strictly What does this mean? This means less than. Less than means to the left. Write this down, okay? So what number are we given? Write it on the chat. What number do we have? We have X is less than, What? what is that value? What is that number? that value is negative four, right? Where does this negative four, where do you see negative four here? This is called a number line. So we're gonna put a negative four, we're gonna put something in there. What? We're gonna, we're going to put an open circle. Okay. So when you have a strictly inequality, you're going to always put an open circle. And what did I what did I say about it? It's going to go to the left because this means all the values of x less than negative four. Who are the values less than negative four? Everything over here, you start shading and you shade the arrow. So you're shading to the left and you are not counting the negative four because it's a strictly inequality. All the values to the left of negative four is negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, all the way to what? Negative infinity. So then for this interval notation, you're just reading what it's saying from left to right. So this is negative infinity up to negative four with parentheses. So let me write here some information. Strictly inequalities have open circles or parentheses or and parentheses. 
I might not have enough room, but parentheses, okay? Interval notation, you're reading off from left to right. So from it's coming from, where is it coming from? Negative infinity, and it stops at negative four, but not touching four. Do you guys see the difference? Do you see what I'm doing here? Yes or no, or maybe so. Okay, some of you got it. Come on, let's let me know if you have any questions. Yes, I got it. Okay. So then let's look at number two. What do we see about number two? What do we have? Do we have a strictly inequality? No, because look, what do we see on there? It has a what? And I'm zooming in for a reason. It has an equal to. So less than or equal to. This is not a strictly inequality. Because it has an equal to. That equal to means the little dash on the bottom. If it has a little dash on the bottom, then that corresponds to a closed circle or bracket. You can either have either or. But what, what does stay the same? It's still a less than, that's true. This is a less, this is a less than, so it's going to go to the left because it's still less than. This, this reads x is less than or equal to three. That's how you, how you say it. This statement is x is less than or equal to three. So then you're going to be in your number line and you're going to put a closed circle on the three because that's what we know. And where do we shade? To the left or to the right? Write it on the chat. Where do we shade? To the left or to the right? Yep, some have it right, some, some, some say right, some say left. Well, let's read, what does this say? Less than means left. So I'm going to take my green and I'm gonna do it all the way over here, including the arrow. Why do I keep saying the arrow? Because it keeps going on to a negative infinity. It's gonna keep on going, on going, on going, on, because that is also part of being less than three. So if we're asking for an interval notation, how would we do it? Well, <clears throat> it has negative infinity. All the infinities have parentheses. So let's write that in a star. All infinities have They all will always have parentheses. You will never see a bracket with uh, infinity. So this is negative infinity up to three and bracket. This is the interval notation. Interval notations will always have brackets and parentheses. Okay. Questions on this problem. So it takes time. So I want you guys to try question three on your own. So question three, this is a strict inequality because it doesn't have an equal to. So it's a strict inequality. So what type is it going to have? An open circle or a closed circle? Write it on the chat. What are we going to have? An open circle or a closed circle? Thank you. And I see a lot of them. They're going to be open circle. So it's an open circle. And this is saying X is, this means greater than. Greater than means it's going to go to the right. So then you're going to put at two, you're going to put an open circle at two and you're going to shade to the right including the arrow. So you have to keep doing the arrow. 
So who can tell me the interval notation? How do I read this? Again, it's from left to right. I start where? Where do I start? At what number? Yes, thank you, Michael. At from two to infinity, and they both have parentheses. Okay. Thank you. So this is exactly what we have. So I want you guys to try now. Um, I'll leave you guys alone. I want you to try questions four. Oh, well, um, try question four on your own, and we'll come back. Enrique, were you able to get it or not yet? Yes, I am. Actually, changed it to my phone. Okay, so I'm going, while you guys are doing the problem, I want you guys to introduce, I want to introduce Enrique. Enrique, can you unmute your, um, can you put on your camera so you then you can let them know who you are and what you're here for and your office hours if you have them. So yes. go ahead and take it away. Um, I don't know if you can see me now. We Let's can. See. Perfect. Okay. So, Kaya guys, my name is Enrique. I'm going to be your PSP tutor for this class. Um, so, I can tell you uh, this is an amazing class. Ms. Perez is an excellent teacher. Um, uh, PSP, it's basically free tutoring. Uh, we will work like a little like around the schedule from the class. And also I uh, will be available like a little uh, different hours. So uh, basically it's free help. So uh, you can get as much as you need uh, from this, from tutoring. So please, if you need any help or you have any questions, you can let me know. Uh, right now I'm kind of figuring that little the schedules, but most likely the sessions will be probably two after the class and maybe one in a day that you don't have classes, but I'm still working on it. But as long as I have it, probably in the afternoon, I will let Miss Perez know so she can post it on Canvas. And once I, I, I'm in Canvas, I, I can post some things and make reminders or maybe ask, uh, answer maybe one, uh, some questions. Thank you, Ms. Perez. All right. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Enrique. You can go ahead and uh, if you want to stay and your camera, if not, you're shy. I know um, <laughs> you can um, stop the video now. It's nice to see you, by the way. So um, a little bit of background that um, I've worked with Enrique last fall. He was my PSP tutor for Math 72 with support. He has done a wonderful job helping out students that are struggling in math and the ones that are not, they still get the help. So when you're doing a quiz, you wanna prepare for a quiz, a test, um, anything of that sort. And if you're struggling with the course, that's why he is here for. So for example, I will not be able to probably like maybe my office hours, Wednesdays, two to three, they don't fit your schedule. You might go to work, might, you might be working at home, whatever that might be. Um, he will have different office hours for you to attend. It's like a little mini course. He is going to be working side by side with me. He should, he has access to all my notes. And if he doesn't, well, you'll, you'll have them very soon on Canvas. Mm -hmm. yes. And he knows exactly what we're doing in class. So he's going to be even in our Zoom class on Monday, Wednesday, potentially Fridays or whenever he can come in. So then he can be aware of your where you might be struggling. And then you might want to reach out to him at any point in time when he's available and he's going to provide me his schedule for me to post on Canvas. And then you guys will have an own Zoom room with him and then he can help you out. Maybe myself and I, um, sorry, Enrique and I might do the problem differently, but as long as you know how to do it, that's what I care about. And remember when you're doing a quiz or a test, you're going to be asked to, you're going to be able to use your notes. However, you're, you need to show me some work and we'll talk about that uh, very soon. All right, any other questions? Thank you, Enrique, for your introduction. He's you. going to be sticking around. If you have any yes. questions for him after our Zoom, you guys can, 
um, address him about that. But again, he has not established his schedule yet. So if you want to say, oh, what time will you be available? He mm -hmm. might not have that information yet, but he will very soon, perhaps. Yes. I want to say by the end of the week, am I being too pushy? Uh, no, it's probably maybe today or tomorrow. Yeah, just like trying to figure okay. out because my classes got kind of a little overlap. So I'm trying to figure out, I, I think we'll be today or tomorrow. Okay, so then there it is. So then, thank you. So he should be giving me probably that information by the end of Friday. So then yeah. you have a chance to work with him. Okay, all right. So let's continue. Thank you so much, Enrique. And we'll hear more from you very soon. And yes. I always, during lecture, I always ask for input from Enrique. So he can, you know, sometimes I'll let him say, okay, can you explain this problem? So then you can get an idea of how he, how he's going to be able to help you. Okay. Anything mm -hmm. else? I'm going to continue with the problem. Thank you, Enrique. Okay. All right. Let's look at question four. Um, I know some of you put some answers on the chat. Thank you for that. So what I'm going to ask is, um, I'm going to start calling on people. So let me go ahead and call on Ruth. How would you do this problem, Ruth? Are you in here, Ruth? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Yes. All right, so go ahead and tell me what you did on this problem. So Are you having technical difficulties? You're fine? No, I got it. So for this okay, problem, I'm not sure if it's right, but I did a, I think a closed uh, dot on negative six. Yes, that's correct. Because and you have then, right at the equal to. Mm -hmm. Where did you shade? I shaded towards the left. I do get confused in the shaded part though. I'm not sure if that's okay, correct. Okay, thank you for your honesty. So what is this? symbol mean this means greater than so when it's a greater than or equal to where does it go it goes to the right right oh okay okay yeah i see so it would go to the right so i need and, to shade everything and the arrow go ahead ruth and i also have a question i do know that in some of these sometimes it's like um dotted line or it's like a dark dark oh. line i think Hold on, I did this this wrong. It's from negative six. So say that again, Ruth. That uh, I was one? seeing that. So I know that sometimes in, in these kind of problems, it's like a solid line or sometimes it's like dashed line. So these are all like solid. Oh, but that's in, yeah. Well, this one, when, when you're, when you're talking about dash and solid, you're talking about like an actual like line like this. Not yet. We haven't done that yet. So th there are two different things. You need to be careful, but yes and no. So when you have a greater than or equal to, when there's an equal to it's solid, but that's not until later. Okay. Thank you. I was getting it kind of confused. No, 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 no. That different thing, different thing. So what about interval notation? Let me call on someone else. Um, Viviana, what would it be your interval notation? How would did you write that? Where do, where do you start? From where? From the closed circle. So that would be bracket negative six. Yes. And then you said that all infinity has parentheses. So that would be infinity and then parentheses to close it off. Perfect. There it is. And that is my solution. Thank you, Joanne, for posting your solution on the chat. I saw that. Good. So now let's work in reverse order. What if I give you a shaded thing? Now I'm asking you to express the inequality. There's two things that I'm asking you. Tell me the inequality and use interval notation. There's two different things I'm asking you to do. What is the inequality? Well, first, what does this even mean? I see a negative seven and I see a parenthesis. What does that mean? The parenthesis means is it's going to be a strictly inequality. And where is it shaded? To the right or to the left?
So Angela, it's to the right, right? Yes. So it'll be. So how would you create your inequality? Mm -hmm. um, it would be negative seven is greater than X or flip it around. It's the other way around. Exactly. It's X. It's greater, greater than, than negative seven. That's what it would be because you have a strictly inequality and you're shading to the right. We don't know what these values are. That's why it's called an X. We don't know because it could be anything. It could be anything. It could be, uh, Wendy, you have a question? Yes. You said that Go it's ahead. in the parentheses, right? Right. So when it's in the parentheses, that is not uh, greater or equal. You well, no, 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 that's different things. So what does it mean? So the parentheses, the parentheses and the open circle goes with the strictness, the strictly inequality. It doesn't tell me greater than or equal to. It just tells me it's an inequality that's strictly. That means that, sorry. It means that it does not going to have an equal to. That's what it means. But the shading part tells you greater than or equal to. Do you see that difference? Or no? Wendy? No. Okay. So let's look at this. When you look at this question, Wendy, the first thing that you see is what? Mm -hmm. What do you see about it? Tell me what do you see about this problem? Okay, that is how negative. would you look at this? Yeah, it's a negative seven. Okay. And or an X because we don't know what the number, right? Okay, so you have an yeah. X and a negative seven, right? And like you said that it's um uh, it goes to the right, which is greater. Mm-hmm. Than seven. Okay. So it's greater. And greater. Oh, because it so you're already telling me what it is. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Okay. So and what about that greater? It's just greater. It's just strictly inequality. That means you do oh. not have a little li line on the bottom, right? So uh -huh. that's this is exact, this is exactly what it is. This answer. Okay. What about the I, I interval of right? But I just got a little bit confused with the parentheses since you said it's the parentheses that I didn't see at that, but it's got a different. Okay. Yeah. So now interval notation, Angela, thank you. You're saying you got, she got confused. We are solving interval notations when we're finding the inequality. Yeah. So we're doing two things, right? We're doing inequality, which is this one that I just highlighted. And we're doing interval oh. notation. Interval notation, that's when you start reading what it is. So what is this? How can I read this problem? Well, you just, it, that one is actually even easier because they're already telling you what it is. It's, it, you're just copying what it is. It's parentheses, negative seven, and you'll see it all the way to infinity. That's, it's already there. They're already giving it to you. You're just copying it over. That's the easiest part. When they don't have open and closed circle. Okay. That is the interval notation for this problem. Any questions here? I have a question. Yes, Viviana. So it'll always be a strictly inequality if it doesn't have the little dash in the bottom. And, and your, instead of a parentheses, you'll have a bracket that, remember, I wrote it over here. Oh. So I if it's not a strict. Go ahead. So if it's not a strict inequality, sorry, I heard that too. If it's not a strict inequality, then it'll have the bracket. So right here, it says, that's why it's important to like write notes like on, your, on the side. It says, this is not a strictly inequality. It has an equal to, that means a little line on the bottom. It says, 
close circle slash bracket. So you can either see a bracket or you could see an open or a close circle. Okay, that means it's the same. They go hand in hand because it has an equal to on the bottom. And I highlighted right here. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next problem. Let's scroll down. And let's look at question six. You should see it. It's, it's taking a little longer than usual, but that's fine. All right, so you see number six. What, are, what am I asking you? I'm asking you to find the inequality and I'm asking you to find the interval notation. First, let's find the inequality. So I'm going to go ahead and call on Michael, are you in here? All day. All right, perfect. So tell me what would be your inequality, not your interval, your inequality. What is your inequality? It would be X is less than or equal to five. Exactly. How did you arrive to that answer? Can you elaborate on that? I saw a bracket, so that's not an inequality and it starts at five. And it's less than, so I'm going left. And you shade, because it's shaded to the left, that, yes. you, that tells you automatically you need a, sh that is a less than or equal to because of the bracket. That's exactly it, exactly. Any questions on the inequality? Thank you, Michael. So Kevin, Kevin Huerta, are you in here? Kevin, are you shy, Kevin? So tell me, what is your interval notation? How do you read this interval notation? From where to where? If you're shy, you can write your answer on the chat. Or let me go ahead and so it's four to infinity. You need to be careful. So look at our inequality, not quite. Let me go ahead and call on someone else. Marisol, are you in here? Marisol Reyes. So X is less than three, be careful. Oh, you're giving me another answer. I'm here. Marisol, are you in here? Yes, I'm here. So what would be your interval notation for six? Um, parentheses, negative infinity and five, close bracket. I don't exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. Okay. Don't, don't doubt your work. Exactly. Where okay. is it coming from? It's coming from a negative infinity. And remember, all the infinities come with a parentheses, mm -hmm. all of them. Okay. And it stops at five and it even has a bracket. So you just could steal it. So you know it has a bracket there. So it's negative infinity to five. There it is. Exactly. That's exactly right. Now I want all of you to try number seven on your own. Somebody already gave me an answer, but I want you guys to try seven. Try seven. I want you to tell me the inequality and interval notation. I'm going to call on someone. Okay. So make sure you are actively participating in this class because I call on someone that you might not even know who you are that I'm going to pick. So please make sure that you're working on these problems. So I'll give you a few seconds to work on it. It only takes two shakes. Okay, when you're done, just put done. Okay, so a few of you are done, good. I'm gonna go ahead and call on, let me see, who should I call on? Let me look for Reina Salcido. Reina, are you in here, Reina? Yes. So go ahead and let me know your process. It's 
negative for the interval notation. Okay. It's negative infinity with the parentheses and then comma three and then end parentheses. Perfect. And your inequality is what? X less than three. Exactly. How many of you got both of them correct? Good, thumbs up, looks good. All right, yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Some of you got it right. If you didn't, please let me know. Where did you mess up? Where did you lose uh, the uh, train of thought? But I think this is pretty straightforward. Let's look at number eight. Notice that you have a bracket and you have a parentheses. We haven't seen that before, but that's okay. What does that mean? This shaded area is what? It's your X. We don't know what this is. So X is in the middle. It's in between what values? Four and seven. There's a four and there's a seven. So all we need to take care of is the inequalities. And you'll see my, my, my drawing in a minute. It takes a little bit longer than usual. So you have four and you have a positive seven and there's an X in the middle. We need to find the inequalities. What do we know about the shaded area that is in between, but one has a bracket. So what do we know? We know that it's the X is greater than or equal to four, but it's less than seven. That's what we know. So these are a little bit more tricky. You'll see it um, coming up in a second. So make sure you're looking at the inequalities. So what does this mean? This is saying that four is less than or equal to X, but it's less than seven. So X is in between four and seven, but one has a bracket and one has a parentheses. Do you see that? I hope that you do. So that means you are going to have two different inequalities here. One is an equal to because the four has a bracket. and the seven has a parentheses, so that should match. So one is a strictly inequality and the other one is not. One is an equal to, one is not. Okay, so what would be the interval notation? The interval notation is already there, that's why I rather have open and closed circles because that makes you think a little bit harder, but this one, you could distract it. This is four slash seven. That's it. You just um, write it on there and you'll see it very soon on my end. This, there it is. So four dash seven with a parentheses. The seven has a parentheses, the four doesn't. Pretty simple. What you're just doing is just reading off what's shaded, okay? Any questions on number eight? This is the time to ask if you have them. Questions on eight? Okay, so you guys are pretty quiet. Okay, that, I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign if you're too quiet, that scares me. Okay, all right, let's look at question number nine. What do we see, of, what is special about number nine? Let me call on Joanne, what is different about number nine? Um, it is shaded on uh, from both ends uh, up to the other end. Exactly. So negative Every five to positive five. Right, but no, not, not just five. It doesn't stop at five. Look, look at the arrows. The arrows are shaded. So all this everything is shaded what does that mean if everything is shaded every single thing is shaded. it's it's infinity both ways I'm, I'm looking at that michael yeah it's infinity going both ways so what does that mean about x that means that x can be anything x can be negative infinity negative one anything that x is and the um for interval notation is negative infinity to positive infinity. It's the whole thing. You'll see it uh, very, very um, fast right now on my sheet. So interval notation, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. It's the whole thing. 
And for my interval or for my inequality, it would be X is all real numbers. So you can say this, you can say this, X is all real numbers and you'll see it very, very soon. It, it has a little, this symbol means X is all real numbers. So any real number, this little R with like two dashes, that means X is all real numbers. That's what it means. So it's, you're not gonna see an inequality because what it can't be, because it could be any single point. Give me any number, it's going to lie on that interval because it represents the whole thing. Do you see that? I hope it's, it's clear to everyone to see, okay? So I want you guys to try 10 on your own. It's very similar to eight, except both of them have parentheses now. I want you guys to try question 10 on your own and then I'll call someone. So try number 10. So when you're done, just put done on the chat on then I'll know when you're done. So I want you to tell me the inequality and the interval notation, okay? It gets so cold in my house. Ugh. Okay, so some of you are done. Some of you put done on the chat. When you're done, let me know. Okay, so a few of you are done. All right, so let me call on, let me check. Jose, are you in here, Jose? Jose, are you in here? Yes, no, maybe so. So let me know, tell me what you got for number 10. Can you unmute yourself? Okay, but this, so this is new to you, okay? Do you want me to call on someone else? So let me go ahead and call on so some of you are shy, don't worry. Let me call on Lauren, Lauren Young. Okay. Um, I got five is greater than 10. Five is greater than 10. Is this what you got? Yeah. Okay, so. Because mm, it's not equal to. Right, but you're missing something. What does this shaded area mean? What what variable does that mean? You're missing something big. It says that X lies between five okay. and 10. Yes. And they both have a strictly inequality. You'll see it very soon. Five is so x is in between five and ten and they're both so it's saying five is less than x but x is less than ten right you it lies in between five and ten that's what it means okay wendy did you have a question i think i saw your hand up no i was gonna answer but thank you Oh, okay, okay. So it's between five and 10. And then Wendy, can you tell me the interval notation now that you want to participate? Uh, <laughs> okay, it's, I guess it's five and then 10, the parentheses. Yeah, but 
parentheses, five, 10 parentheses. There it is. They both have parentheses. There it is. Perfect. So you'll, you should see it very soon on my end. I, it has like a late, I don't know why. The Wi-Fi probably, I don't know. All right. So next, this, what we covered right now was just identifying inequalities identifying where the where they lie but next what we're going to do next is to solve inequalities so you do you guys all remember how to solve equations they're very similar if we have let's say an example if we have x minus 2 equal 4 and and you'll see it very soon on my end and i ask you to solve an example, x minus two equal four. How would you solve that? You just bring the two over by adding, right? You get x equals six and you're done. But for this type of equations or inequalities, because these are inequalities, you won't have one answer. You have multiple answers. You have an interval as an answer. Is that clear? So if we look at question 11, what would we have to do to solve X? What do we have to do to the one? What would we have to do? Viviana, what would we have to do here to isolate X? Are you in here? To isolate X, you would have to add one to both sides. Exactly, you would have to add one because we do the opposite operation of subtracting. Do you see that? I think, um, thank you, Viviana. Yes. So Lauren, do you see the difference? We want to add, not subtract. Okay. So do you always do the opposite? So let's say oh. it was plus one. Look, it look over here. What minus. did we do over here? So if this is a minus, bring it over by adding. And that's why okay. I got six. It's always the opposite. Okay. So here we have to add both sides by one. And what do I get? I get X is less than six, but we're not done. What are they asking us? Graph the solution set on a number line, right? So that means we have to make a number line like this. You'll see it on my end. So it says graph the solution set. And you have to create a little number line that I have right here in blue. And what number will you pit, put in there? Ivania, what number would I put in here? Ivania, are you in here? So what number should go on there? It should be a six. Remember, it's the number that we see. We already did this already. So we're gonna put a six. I, it doesn't even matter where you put it, as long as it's not in the it's not in the corners, obviously. So you'll put a six. You'll see my six coming up soon. What am I going to do with the six? Am I going to put an open circle or a closed circle? We went over this. It's going to be an open circle, and I'm going to shade to the left and the arrow. We did this already. So that is my graphical solution, but I still need to do an interval notation. The interval notation answer is negative infinity up to six, and they both have parentheses, okay? It's positive six. Oh, okay, yeah, it's positive, right. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Are we good? Okay. All right. So then, Wendy, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question. Um, it's I think. Do you have on the parentheses? You have always have to do first the negative number and then a positive number. What do you mean a negative number and a positive number? Like, like right that? now, you do the the parentheses and then you do the negative infinity and then comma six. I know it's because, right because okay. it's in order okay. because it's in okay. order so smallest to greatest always okay I just want to notate that thank you. yes it's always from left to right always so you always read from left to right always 
you can't put six and then negative infinity. That does not make sense, right? So, or you can't put 10 and then five. So you have to go in order. Does that answer your question, Wendy? Yes, thank you. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's look at 12. Again, we're solving for an inequality. What does solving mean? It means to isolate. What do we have to do with that four? We're not gonna subtract four. We need to do what? What is the Divide. four doing? Divide, exactly. Thank you. I see both all of Marisol and Michael. Thank you for your participation. Yes, you need to divide both sides by a positive four. So this is X is greater than or equal to negative five, okay? And then we're not done. We still have to do that graphical solution interval answer. So we're going to do again, my number line, I'll put a negative five and then let me call on Richie, will I have an open or closed circle on the negative five? Thank you, Richie, closed. So I'm going to put a closed circle on the negative five and where do I shade? Jose, now do you know where am I shading? Write it on the chat, to the right or to the left? So, Jose, where is this going to be shaded? It's going to be shaded to the right, okay? So make sure that you are participating, uh, Jose, please. Everybody should be on task. So I'm going to be shading to the right, including my arrow. So this is the graphical. My interval notation would be from negative five to infinity. Okay, so you should have these two answers provided on your worksheet. All right, let's scroll down. Number 13 is a little bit tricky because we need to establish some rules for inequalities. So before we do number 13, let me put a highlight. Let me put star. When you divide or multiply by a negative, your inequality will switch. Okay, write it down. When you divide or multiply by a negative number, your inequality will switch. What does that even mean? Well, you'll see it on this example. If I ask you to solve this, what would you just tell me to do? Um, let me see, let me call on someone else. Um, Viviana, you have, you would divide, you would divide both sides by what? Eileen Lopez? Are you in here, Eileen? Eileen, are you in here? Yes or no? Okay, so these things tell me where you are in here or not. So you have to be participating. You have to divide by a negative three. What happens when you divide by a negative three? You just divided by a negative number. That means you have to change your sign. You have to change your sign. You'll see it in a second.
So notice how I switched the sign. It was greater than, now it became a less than, and I solved. Negative three divided by a negative three is an X. Four, and, um, 54 divided by a negative three is a negative 18. So my inequality flipped, it switched, switched or flipped or whatever you want to call it. The thing that it, it, it moved, right? So then to finish off the problem, we have to make our inequality and our solution set negative 18. I'll put an open circle on negative 18 and I'll show you to the left. So then my answer is negative infinity up to negative 18. Okay. Make sure you have a both of them set and ready. So one is the solution set, one is the interval notation answer, both of them. Alrighty, so I want you guys to put your names really quick to take attendance again. And then uh, that'll be it. So any questions in terms, we'll stop right here. We'll come back at equation number 14 on Friday. I'll see you guys all on Friday. So go ahead and put that in there and I'll see you guys on Friday. Any questions? Um, Lauren, I don't know what you mean by just a sheet that would have like a closed circle. What, is, what does a closed circle mean? Or the parentheses or the brackets, what does that mean? Um, or should we just um, make our own? <laughs> so, so you're telling me you want me to do one right now? Well, no, I was just wondering if you have one that we can like- I know, but I can get like, I can probably post it on Canvas if you want me to. Yeah, that would okay. help because I my I don't know my notes are just like scattered so I have to go back and then I tried scrolling up on your screen but I know I can't scroll up so it just I don't know I might make it a little bit easier for me. All right, sure, I could do that for you. That's okay. no problem. Great, thank you. Yeah. So the people that I have right now on the list, you guys gave me your names. However, even though you your names are up here, that, that doesn't mean that you're going to receive credit. Why am I saying this? Because I call on people and I see like, I, I could tell you on the spot, oh, hey, give me the answer for this. And you stay quiet and I like keep telling you and you that tells me that you are not here because I can have, like, I'll do this in like an example. Uh, like um, I could do this and like be just like listening and then do something else like on Facebook or whatever. Do you see what I mean? So you are committed to the classroom. You have to be on task. You have to be working with me. Um, I'm not a crazy person. So please be aware of that. You're taking an online a course, but that means you still have to be present. This is called a synchronous course. This is not a full online course that you can be here whenever you want, no. So this two hours belong to this course. And I, I want you guys to be participating, put your answers on the chat. That tells me that you're working. Even though I don't call your name, you're giving me your answers on the chat. That's valuable to me. That's how I also take participation points, okay? So everything is part of your grade. So I just want you to know those, those are the ones that so taking an account, not just because you're like here, your camera is like on or like, like a black screen. Um, that does not mean you're going to receive credit because you have to be actively participating. Okay. That's on one note. Um, another note is any questions? How is everybody doing today? Inequalities. We talked about sale tax. We talked about um, triangles, perimeters. Any questions that you might have before I let you guys all go? Um, if you are free, you guys can go. Marilyn, do you have a question? Um, yeah, I was wondering, you said once we were done with these lessons, we could uh, get a start on the homework? Yeah, actually, so right now I did not finish section 2.4, but we're, I'm almost done technically. So I think with the ability that I did like for today's lesson and what I've been doing for last class, 
I think that you should be good to, I would start honestly your homework assignment since day one, but it's really up to you because you don't want to do everything on Sunday and then I'll help break loose. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, so we can start the homework and then like go back to it as we learn more and more. Oh yeah. Homework. Homework is fine. You can go okay. back and forth. You can get questions wrong and then you could do them again and again and again until you get them right. Okay. I, it's because I was scared to start it because I didn't know if it was like a quiz and you had to all do it at the same time. No. And I see another hand, Kevin. Oh, sí. Tengo una pregunta. ¿Se habla español, maestra? I do, but you, sí, se habla español, pero... Uh -huh. This is an English class. I'll just wait yeah. for everybody to leave and then I'll talk with you individually. Okay. But I, I do speak with Spanish. So if you ever want to talk to me in Spanish, okay. stay after class because this is a English math English. course. I can I can totally, totally. I'm like, I can speak okay. any any language if you want. Okay. Any anybody else? Any questions? You guys are free to go if you do need to go. I do. If, Who's this? I have office hours today, Trina. Wednesday, three. Uh, just a question on the quiz. Can, do I yeah. show work on the quiz or can I just put my answer? So remind me who this is? Serena. Oh, okay, Serena. So for the quizzes, I'm going to be nice and I'm not gonna ask you for the work for quiz, but I will ask you for the exams and I'll tell you tell you how I'm going to add another question on canvas where it says submit your work and I'll be very specific of what I want okay but not for this quiz not for first quiz okay uh, okay thank you yep Wendy yeah Miss Perez I have a question on um, on the lecture today you said um at the end of uh question number 13 of 23 you said that it's a so you're expecting for a solution set, setting? That's what you said? When, when, for the answers? Solution? Um, so you have to have a graphical solution. So that's like the number line. Uh-huh. That's a graphical solution and the interval notation solution. There's two solutions. Right. Well, notation solution. So you, you need only two, right? Yes. Okay. 